what's going on, everybody? Chris Prather here. We're watching uh, watching me win the my first ever title, the Scorpion Championship. And I, I will say, a lot of the matches coming up to this were pretty exciting. They were so tough, especially this left lane. If it got right at that second tracer there, it did not want to get back up the hill, and there were, I would say. Half a dozen or more. Two four eight ten. Uh, two four eight tens left between the the four of us here. And I think we've already established that the right lane was a little trickier. Excuse me, that the left lane was tricky. Right lane. Everybody. I will say with BJ throwing this high road X, I was really surprised that uh, with that ball selection because they were so tight down lane and. I know he's got, you know, 500 RPM, as you can see here, but it was just, I felt like you needed a, a little bit more aggressive ball to get that ball to actually face up and go through the pins, any at all. But, I mean, obviously, he's he was the number one seed here, so I'm not going to say that he doesn't know what he's doing. You know, he's very similar to Prather in that they're very steady going to the foul line. Biggest difference, higher swing for BJ, and he's got a higher rev rate. I honestly don't know if I'm even watching him bowl, like, while I'm sitting there. I like that. Normally, I right don't really do that. I just bowl my own game and then pull everything down. Mm -hmm. twiddle my thumbs while I'm sitting there Inhale, trying to pass the time because the guys like to really through. take their time while they're Breathe through the eyelids. bowling in these... Uh, just on TV in general, trying to make their opponents sit there. And let's not forget in 2016, he finished second on this very Scorpion pattern in Reno, Nevada. No secret that BJ Moore likes this Scorpion oil pattern. Or anthropod, depending on this whole time that we're going through this match, I'm just focusing on throwing the ball virtually as slow as I can. I'm just trying to get it to read the lane. And you can see on this right lane how it actually came off the spot there. It did not do that on that on the left lane at all. No matter what the the, the oil there says with all the ball tracks. If you got the ball to that spot, it 2 8 10 every time on the left lane. And he's actually standing in front of the ball return now. One of a handful of players that doesn't go to a spare ball. I think we saw AJ Chapman last night doing that. Norm Duke uses. A flat hand release to throw it end over end. Kyle, make his Kyle Troop also on occasion will throw his strike ball. In a strike <laughs> that phase two that I'm throwing there, I actually threw in the in the playoffs as well. For the entirety of the playoffs, I still I still carry it around with me. It's like the the old faithful. Once you find one, you just hold on to it. Mm, catch it some more. Well, that went left sooner than he thought. You see a little bit of nerves there, trying to figure out, like, all right, are you going to make this interesting, or what's going on? I also think that I was a little bit more surprised there that it actually hooked, because the whole time we had been facing the, the you know, like I said, the 2 4 8 10, 2 8 10, 2 10 combos, if you got it right, like that. So. I think that was a little bit overcompensation of I'm going to make sure this one hooks and I'm going to get to the spot. Moore grew up in North Carolina outside of Raleigh in the town of Apex. Recently moved to Greensburg, Pennsylvania, just east of Pittsburgh. Been there last and I don't normally watch myself <laughs> bowl on TV shows, let alone, you know, watch my opponent. So I have no clue what... BJ did or does in this match, so we're kind of watching it, you know, for the first time together. Absolutely. 
Well, remember we looked at the soil pattern not too long ago and, and I'm pretty sure Randy here is just talking about like around this area here how so different the lanes are because now they're into this fifth arrow mm, draw it out Randy they're pretty deep and they're going to continue to chase it left remember with every ball that goes down the hope lane, he watches this these reactive resin bowling balls absorb oil so with every shot the playing field changes as we take a look at BJ Moore's arsenal high road X Mm, there it is. That same two, four, eight, ten zone. Every time. You just four pin. get it a little long and right, and it will not hook. And that was literally like, that was, was the, the worst miss. The like, you, it, and it didn't matter who it was. Like, Belmo could have been bowling on that and throwing it as slow as he possibly could. And if it gets to that spot, it's just not going to hook. I think it's a little bit of a topography type of deal where the lanes aren't exactly level a little bit of a dip there so it's like the ball's trying to climb uphill and it just doesn't do that oh clap and i didn't even realize in the fourth last two shots for prather both went high see what type of adjustment he makes there really is only one left and maybe loft there's the loft mm. Yeah, fuck ten. Ooh, I got one. I don't remember that. When he has stuff like that happening, I've been there before. It's it's a sign. It's it's your it's your night. There's the loft to delay hook. Remember the ball can't hook if it's in the air, right, Rob? If you tell me so. And then the messenger, the slow rolling messenger from deep inside. So at uh, at Wichita State, the my last year, or maybe it was the year after I was done, the guys would anytime they got a messenger into the ten, they would yell, "Get him a body bag from uh, the Karate Kid movie." Uh, so <laughs> I've been trying to incorporate that into my celebrations and. Put it on TV. It just hasn't. Uh, I don't think a slow roller like that is an opportune time to bring out the whole body bag, especially if it's in like the fourth frame. I did do it in the league, but you can't hear me because Bayside's too too loud. Hmm. I just remember the, the final score of this match being really close. Those cute little kids. DJ said, you know, so important for me to have the kids here. I want those pictures of me on the lanes with the kids. His kids are so freaking adorable. This is what daddy used to do when you were there. Although he and Tania, a little, little leery to bring the youngsters. But I just remember the, the, the final score of this match being relatively close. And I'm kind of curious how it gets there. Because like I said, I don't watch BJ Bowl. I don't really remember what I did. Especially with how hard this left lane is. Left lane. I probably two eight ten in there somewhere. It's been like that the entire evening. Remember the last shot went light? Human instinct. You can just see how hard this this left lane is. If you get it to that friction spot early, it hooks immediately and faces up and goes through the goes high and then if you get it a little long and right it just does not want to hook. Chat with Tim Mack. That's Tim Mack recovering from yeah, knee surgery, knee, right. knee replacement surgery. Kind of curious what Timmy and Jimmy were Jim saying here. His right. Back to pray I always like to know like sixth. how the ball reps talk to different, uh, talk to people differently because the way they talk to me is different than the way they talk to. Mmm. Yeah. That is, that, I honestly thought about making a little bit of a, a gif about this because like that's just not something that you see like like they're already hard and then you hit the pocket where 
realistically, that should be a flat 10, and and then the four pin just stands there. Like, everything just goes that way, and then it doesn't even move. And when I let go of that, I honestly thought that I made it. Like, <laughs> that would have been a great way to <laughs> follow it up. And I'm just looking at BJ, like, what even is that? Like, BJ and I are good friends, so, like, how you can't even be mad about that. Like, I threw a good shot, and it's just... <laughs> I forgot that this was the show that uh, this was the match that that happened. I kind of want people to remember that shot more than me winning because that's just that's just not something that you see, and especially for it to happen on TV, like makes it that much more memorable. Mm. Got lucky there. I missed. Long and right, and it didn't. <laughs> it didn't two eight ten. I think that's what I told BJ there. It didn't two eight ten, so we're good. So easy when you're sitting in this seat. Not so much when you're sitting in theirs. It's even easier. Almost stood on the wrong dot there. Dead eyes that way. <laughs> that should have been the meme. I'm pretty sure BJ and I went back to them after every single shot. And then shortly after that, the PBA said that in matches, we're not allowed to talk to ball reps except in the commercial break. I'm pretty sure it was right after this, after uh, these events at the World Series. So, yeah, everyone, you're welcome. We did that for you. Tim Max, so I asked him um, what they spoke about, and Tim said he gave him advice and told him to move left on the left lane and round off his shot and get a little. But I mean, when they're hard like that, you need that little bit of a soundboard to kind of get the thoughts out of your mind, so that way you can focus on what's coming next. And otherwise, you're just going to be going crazy a little bit and especially for me once my mind starts going and thinking it is I really have to focus on just slowing it down to get it to to get back on the right track uh, the right frame of mind I should say with his feet made sure he got it to the right with slow enough speed and the ball goes sideways like somebody kicked it left but I mean watching watching this match now and like seeing how much like how that ball is really reacting to the friction when he when we both get it to the right early kind of makes me think like oh okay i actually could have thrown a different ball not saying it would work but you know typically when you see miss left and you 210 or or hit light and then you get it right early and it hooks we call that a cliff uh, as far as the way that the oil is shaped on the lane, where a lot of oil to the left, not a whole lot of oil to the right, so when you miss right, it hooks, miss left, it doesn't. Um, yeah, that one was pretty good. Giving it the business on that right lane. Um, typically, you throw a lot of asymmetric balls because they're strong enough to pick up in the oil, and they're the asymmetry will allow it to roll forward off the friction and it, you see a lot of that on like how shots and stuff where uh, you can throw asymmetric bowling balls to, to blend that out and control the pocket a little bit better. So looking at that left lane now in hindsight like maybe I could have done that but mm, little, little splasher but obviously it ended up working out in my favor as far as ball selection. I also just noticed that on the left lane I'm taking six steps. Typically I take five, but when I need to throw it like really slow like we're doing, I just add a step kind of like what Pete Weber does where I add like a little shuffle just to give myself more time on the lane to slow the ball speed down and allow the ball to hook. Just left the ten pin there in the ninth. Oh, he's running out of time, and now he has to try to rely on striking out on the left lane. 
to force Chris Prather to get the first strike in the 10. And the left lane has put some kind of voodoo curse on the guys tonight. I will say it's kind of hard for me to tell you guys kind of like what I'm thinking as BJ's bowling because one, I don't really remember. <laughs> it was, you know, back in April. And uh, when I'm when I'm at that kind of high intensity or high focus, it's very easy for me to just shut my brain off and just let my body do what I've trained it to do, which is what everyone in virtually every single sport when they're competing at a high level, their brain is off. You know, they a lot of sports announcers will say, oh, he's, um, you know, he's out of his mind, which, I mean, I'm not going to lie that 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 is really true, you know, because you're just allowing your body to do what it's, what it, what you've trained it to do, what you spent thousands of hours doing. And I honestly wanted him to strike because I think everything is more exciting. And then he picks it up, and I'm just like, all right, BJ, well, at least you're not just going to give it to me. I'm pretty sure on this telecast there were like three or four of those made, but I mean, when you're leaving 20 of them in five games, they're bound to be made. My friends, we need good count here, and Fraser will have to avoid some crazy pocket split on the right lane. Can get one for the road? Take your victory lap, my man. Yeah, when he told me to take my victory lap, I was kind of like, I still have to mark. <laughs> you know, I know he, he meant it in, in, in good nature and everything, and I knew that he, he believed that I was going to either strike or spare or whatever. But, you know, we saw in, like, the fifth frame that anything can happen, especially with that steep 410. I think Randy's like, oh, my. I had like three pins take out the nine pin because the ball's going sideways through the pocket. His cover, this four pin, and he will win title number one. It's converted 98% of the time on. Pretty sure we watched. Trying to remember order of events here, but I'm pretty sure we watched Brad miss a four pin. Love you, Brad. Uh, <laughs> to miss out on the doubles title. And I thought of him a little bit here when I made that. You are looking at a man who has and <laughs> on the PBA tour. But as soon as I let it go, it was just like this huge weight was lifted off my shoulders because I told myself yes. this year that yes. if I didn't win, we'd have to reevaluate and, uh, you know, just fortunate that it worked out in my favor. But BJ being a great friend and a great sport, you know, first to give me a hug and I'm just so, I know that BJ obviously wanted to win, but I'm just, I'm glad that I bowled him and that it was a, a good match.